It's that time of year again. Time to go over my top favorite GoPro accessories of the year. This year, there are 17 accessories that I find myself going back to over and over again. I do make some form of this video at least once every year. I've got several in the past and I'll leave a link in the description below to those videos. So if you have seen any of those videos, I'm gonna try to not repeat myself with any of these accessories. There might be a few overlaps, but on the whole, they should be new accessories not covered in those videos. So accessory number one are GoPro batteries and a charger. This might seem pretty basic, but now in 2021, we are rolling with the GoPro Hero 10, and it has now been confirmed that the Hero 10 is keeping the batteries and the same form factor as the Hero 9, so we can rest assured that these batteries and chargers are gonna last for at least the GoPro Hero 11, and maybe even beyond that. So if you haven't stocked up an extra GoPro batteries, definitely do that because you'll need them. The next accessory here that's a must have is a cable to attach your GoPro to your smartphone. In my case, I use a Samsung Galaxy S10, so I have a USB-C to USB-C cable, and this is really needed because now in the GoPro Hero 10, I'm able to use a cable like this to connect my GoPro directly to my phone to upload or offload any of my photos and videos, which is a really big deal because in the past, you had to connect the GoPro to your computer or to the GoPro app in order to offload your footage or take out the SD card. But now you can use a single cable like this and it's made it much easier to offload your footage. Next up is a mount. This is a snap mount. And I have talked about this in previous videos, but this is a really awesome mount if you haven't heard of it. It's magnetic and it has a little GoPro attachment on the end. And there are several key things that you can do with this snap mount. But the number one thing that we use it for is that we uh, attach it to our car. And this is a really great way to get our driving photos and videos, since we do that a lot whenever we're shooting our travel vlogs. Another thing you can do is use this little necklace here, kind of like a lanyard, and you can attach a GoPro uh, to your, the front of your shirt and kind of get like a point of view perspective using the snap mount. The next mount that we use a lot is the spider holster. So this is a super small and lightweight mount, and we found this to be useful whenever we're using a hand grip, such as this Insta360 pole or even the GoPro uh, selfie stick. Whenever we're vlogging like this, sometimes we just want to be able to put this in our pockets and generally our pockets aren't quite big enough so we want to attach it to our belt or a backpack strap while the camera is still attached to the, the grip. And so using something like the spider holster is really cool because you take this velcro portion and you wrap it around your mount of choice and then there's a secondary piece that you can clip to your belt or a backpacking strap and then you just lock this into place and this way you can hold your GoPro while it's still attached to a mount so it makes it really easy to detach it and easily pull it out to vlog or shoot a photo or video. Since I mentioned it, the Insta360 selfie stick is one that we continue to use over and over again largely because it is really well made and actually fairly cheap for what it is. It feels really solid while also being very lightweight and it's quite a bit bigger than the GoPro selfie stick. The GoPro selfie stick does have a built-in tripod, which is nice. The Insta360 stick does not, but it does have a quarter inch tripod thread in the bottom if you did want to add a mini tripod. But the really nice thing that is super convenient for us is that you can pull the selfie stick out and it extends really long. And that's also true for the GoPro selfie stick. You can extend it out a little bit but as you can see, it's not nearly as long and tall as the Insta360 stick. So recently we added another grip to our setup and that is the GoPro 3-Way 2.0. We had the original GoPro 3-Way and honestly it was okay, but it had one big flaw and this new GoPro 3-Way has really corrected it. And so the 3-Way, if you're not familiar, it has these little knobs. And so you can loosen the knobs 
and then that allows you to extend this grip and it's kind of like the Insta360 selfie stick but instead of being straight you can make this one straight if you want but you can also curve it out at an angle and that makes it really convenient for filming yourself, filming selfies, or filming action. But the main feature that's vastly improved on the GoPro 3-Way 2.0 is the fact that this handle is now a mini tripod. It just folds out like this, so you can place it down on a flat surface. Now the old GoPro 3-Way also had a tripod, but it was super flimsy, and it really didn't support the whole rig at all. So this is a giant improvement, and this is why we've now been using this GoPro 3-Way 2.0 as one of our main grips slash tripods. Next up, we have the new GoPro Remote. So this one came out earlier this year, 2021, and it's a newer version of the remote. And the main thing that's new about it is that it's compatible with newer GoPros, such as the GoPro Hero 9 and the Hero 10. So if you have an older GoPro, unfortunately this remote is not gonna be compatible with it, but if you have a newer GoPro, then you can't use that old remote with it. You're gonna have to use this new remote. And we were really skeptical about if we even needed to have a remote, but now that we have it, we do find it really useful, especially when we use it in conjunction with our snap mounts. A lot of times we'll have the GoPro mounted to the outside of the car, and in that case, you definitely need the remote because that way you're able to start and stop recording without getting out of your car to touch the GoPro. The next must-have accessory is the Media Mod. This is the Media Mod for the Hero 9, and it also works with the GoPro Hero 10. But the Media Mod, if you're not familiar, it goes on the outside of the GoPro, and the main thing that it does is that it allows you to enhance the sound of your GoPro. Because GoPros don't come with 3.5 millimeter mic jacks built in, if you want to add your own microphone, then you have to have either the Media Mod or the GoPro mic adapter. We like the Media Mod just because it's more form fitting and it also has these cold shoes for attaching your own external microphones. It also has its own built in microphones, but honestly, they're kind of hit or miss. And there's even a windscreen for the Media Mod, but lately it's been falling off and I think we've actually lost it for a second time. So we're giving up on using the Media Mod built-in microphones and using our own external microphones. One of those microphones is right here, and that is the DDD4 Duo. So this microphone looks a lot like the Rode Video Micro, which was our old favorite vlogging microphone. But ever since we found this DD microphone, this has been our new replacement. And the main reason is it is able to capture sound on both the front of the microphone and the back of the microphone. And that's really unique. I haven't seen any other shotgun microphones out there that are able to do that. And so this is really handy because we're often filming with two people, so we need to be able to capture sound on both sides of the microphone. And that feature, by the way, is still lacking on the Hero 10 if you use the GoPro Media Mod. You unfortunately cannot shoot in stereo sound with those built-in mics. You have to choose either front mic or back mic, and so that's yet another reason why we just don't use these Media Mod microphones anymore whenever we're vlogging. If we're not using the DDD4 Duo to vlog, then we're probably using our Rode Wireless Go 2. I'm actually using that to film this video right now, but if you look at any of our other travel vlogs or videos filmed on this channel, we're often using the Rode Wireless Go 2 to film because it's so convenient. You just pop on this little transmitter and it's got a built-in microphone and it works really well. The sound is really awesome. I just posted a six month review of using this Rode Wireless Go 2 and yeah, it's just hands down our favorite vlogging microphone. Next up is an external light. And this is really key because GoPros have always been really bad at shooting in low light. And that is still the case with the GoPro Hero 9 and the Hero 10. After the sun goes down, then the GoPros really don't do well. And even when you're shooting indoors, if you don't have enough ambient light, then forget it. GoPro is not the way to go, unless you have an external light. So our light of choice for shooting with the GoPro is the LumCube 2.0. It's very similar to the GoPro in that it is waterproof proof, crush proof, and ready for action. It also has multiple brightness levels, and the best part of all is that it has this little frame that's magnetic, so you can attach all kinds of filters to the front of it to shape your light. You can attach colored filters, or the one that we find ourselves using the most is this little bulb here, because it really softens the light and looks really pleasing whenever we're trying to vlog with it. 
Next up is the Inky Falcon GoPro Gimbal. This gimbal is special because it's one of very few that support the GoPro Hero 9 and Hero 10. A lot of the other GoPro gimbals out there don't support the newest GoPros, so be sure to check compatibility. But if you're wondering, GoPros do have really great in-body stabilization known as HyperSmooth, so it's arguable if you really need a gimbal for stable video. But gimbals can still come in handy because they can help you shoot moving or motion time lapses, and they can also help you shoot cinematic video. Speaking of cinematic video, another accessory that you might need are ND filters. These are little filters that, in the case of the Hero 9 and Hero 10, these replace that filter on the front of the GoPro. And these filters are really important for making sure that your lighting is balanced whenever you're shooting in cinematic settings or shooting in really bright conditions. I have another video deep diving into ND filters and exactly what they are and when to use them and why you need them. So check out the link in the description below to that video if you want to find out more. But if you really want to up your video quality, then you might also want to look into these combination ND filters and polarizers. These are also made by Freewell, and they include both ND filters and a polarizing filter in the same little filter case. And so that's really important because polarizers cut down on the reflection and also enhance color saturation in your image. So really great for shooting outdoors and especially if you're shooting in water or nature. So besides being able to switch out the filters on the GoPro Hero 9 and 10, you can also switch out the lens. So there are two lenses in particular that I really recommend using with those cameras. The first is an anamorphic lens. And anamorphic lenses also add to that cinematic look in your videos. And there's one by Skyreet, which is really nice. It has a great build quality, and the image quality is really great on the GoPro. And it just really adds to that whole cinematic look. The other lens that I recommend getting for your GoPro is the Max Lens Mod. This one came out along with the Hero 9 and currently is only compatible with the Hero 9 and soon will be compatible with the Hero 10 after the November 2021 firmware update. But that Max Lens Mod that lets you get the widest field of view on a GoPro and it also gives you ultra stable and steady footage. Unfortunately, right now, it can only support up to 2.7K resolution, but for most of us, that's still really high resolution. And the final accessory that I have to talk about is a bag or a case to hold all of your smaller accessories. So GoPros now do come with these hard zippered cases and I don't really find them useful, honestly. I find that they're kind of an awkward shape and they're not quite big enough to hold all of the accessories that I want them to hold. So I don't use those cases. Let me know in the comments if you guys do and what you put in them because I can't find a really useful case for those cases. But instead, I like to use one of these two zippered cases. The first one is a Tenba BYOB bag, and I like it because it's zippered, it's nicely padded while still being lightweight, and it's a good size for holding some of my larger accessories, such as the gimbal, the GoPro 3-way, and GoPro Jaws, some of my other bigger mounts that don't quite fit anywhere else. They all fit inside this Tenba bag. But if I'm rolling with just smaller accessories, then I tend to use this Think Tank, Think Tank Speed Changer version 2.0. I think there's a newer version of this bag. But this bag is really great because it's just a nice size. Again, really lightweight, zippered, made of super great material. And it's just the right size to hold most of my GoPro accessories. So with the exception of the gimbal and some of the bigger mounts, I can put all of my GoPro accessories that I have here, plus more, inside of this Think Tank bag. And it's really useful for holding all those things and also accessing them whenever I need to find them. So there you have it. Here are all of my latest GoPro accessories that I'm using with my Hero 9 and Hero 10. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Again, I encourage you to look at my other GoPro accessory videos if there's something that I didn't talk about because chances are I did talk about it in one of those other previous videos. But let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for other accessories for my GoPro. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.